I've been pretty miserable since you decided to move out. Since our trial separation. And I know at first I just wanted you back. But it's been five months now, and, um... The other day, uh, last week, there was this bloke at work, and, um... Well, I suddenly... You know, I... I quite fancied him. Took me by surprise. And um, I didn't do anything about it, but I think it meant something. I think it meant I'm over you. And that's why I think that maybe we should make this separation permanent. I think we should split up. Paul? How do you feel about that? When Sarah spoke about being attracted to someone else, what was the first question that came into your head? Did she shag him? I said nothing happened. OK, and what about the second question? How big was his dick? Thanks for doing this, Mark. I don't really want them here when he's taking his stuff. You're doing the right thing, you know. I can't think of a couple that ever had a trial separation and got back together, can you? Ken and Deirdre in Coronation Street. Mark, we're going to be late. And you've got nothing to worry about with your kids. They couldn't be any more damaged. <laughs> Just remember how miserable you and Paul made each other and hang on to that. Oh, and, uh, don't do that thing you do to show how much your life's moved on. It's a dead giveaway. What thing? You know, that furniture thing. Still make it. I can't. Sorry. What kind of mate are you? Leaving me alone with two teenagers for the afternoon. You said you'd help. Come on. Mark, I can't. Really. I didn't even know you were seeing anybody. Yeah, well, it's very, um, recent. Don't suppose he wants to come to the pictures, does he? Bye. See you later. Yeah, and you'd better be there, no matter how good he is in bed. <sighs> Change something in here. Subtle but effective. Can't quite put my finger on it. Yes, all. No, don't put me off. We had Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen around. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Where are the kids? I got Mark to take them out. Mark's been grazing. Yeah, yeah, he has. You've lost weight. Since Monday. <laughs> You're still full of shit. I don't think I want to take anything, to be honest. Well, at least take that bit of carpet around the toilet. It's got your priceless urine collection on it. I thought you'd be happy. I thought you wanted a split up. I think about you a lot. Can't seem to break the habit. I'm going to go out for a couple of hours, and you can take what it is you'll take. I don't think I can do this. Yeah, Paul. Paul, a total mess. No, you're not a total mess. Well, you are. But no more than, say, Charles Manson or that bloke who wears that lady's raincoat outside Safeways. 
Thanks. That's all right. What did I come up again? So you could take your stuff. Oh, yeah. Would you break? Why? Don't you want them to catch their parents in bed together? <sighs> well, it might give them the wrong idea. And what idea might that be? Well, they might think. They might think we were going back together. We wouldn't want them to think that, would we? <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't believe I did this. I just don't believe it. Well, I wasn't planning on going to bed with you. So why didn't you stop them when you saw it was leading? Well, it would have been a waste, wouldn't it? <sighs> you are so stupid. Why can't you just admit you fancied a quick one? I'd have gone to bed with you anyway if you'd asked. Don't forget this. Crap. I only like one trick. The only reason you came on to me is because I said I fancied someone else. Well, it did shock me, I have to admit. I thought we had an agreement. We weren't going to see other people. I said I fancied a bloke at work for a split second. I'm not seeing anyone. Are you? What do you mean? You, you are, aren't you? Almost. In a way, yeah. I think so. You only think so? Cross, what's it like for her? First time, as a couple. See if anything's changed. But now that you aren't cheating on me, you know. Come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can smell perfume on you. Yeah, that'll be Sarah's. Let's be honest, it all got very intense. You got very emotional, you know? Holding on to me, crying, begging me. Oh, relationships, eh? You'd have them. You and me from now on. You shagged him? I don't need to sound so horrified. Why? Happy, I suppose. When you've been with someone that long, it just follows. No, fear. You weren't there. Fear that you're never going to shag anyone ever again, so you might as well jump your husband, because at least you know the routine. You are so shallow. Yeah, which makes me such a great judge of character. I'm telling you, this is why you've got to get back out there. Get yourself a bloke. In a year or two. Too long. I've been to bed with the same bloke for 20 years. I'm 40 years old, I've got two kids, and when I look in the bathroom mirror, I've suddenly got my mum's arms and my dad's tits. Exactly, you've got no time to lose. So I've got to get out there before I grow too repulsive. Is this your argument? Before bits start to drop off. 
Well, Veronica managed to pull Paul, and she's two years older than me. It's all right. Paul told me everything. Right, um... Very good. So, how long have you known about Paul and Veronica, then? Uh, well, um... Longer than you, I guess. But it's, um... Difficult, you know, being stuck in the middle. But I'm, I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm just relieved it's out in the open. Yeah, me too. And I'm relieved it doesn't go off with that Mary. Now, that really would have made him the sad man at the disco, wouldn't it? Mary who? Shit, I thought you knew everything. Mary who? How many more secrets are there? You said you knew everything, but I don't know how much everything is. So, Mary works in the shop. Never mentioned her. Well, she's new. Look, I just think it was one of those things that happens around stock-taking. Great. I thought you were over him. I am. It just hurts to be lied to. It pisses me off to be messed around. He was seen Veronica for ages, wasn't he? But why do you need to know? I think this knowing everything thing is very overrated. Come on! He's dropped you right in at here, Mark. You don't owe him anything. OK, they were having an affair before he moved out. <gasps> and who's that? His boyfriend? That'll be Julie. Well, who's Julie? Your prospective lodger. You didn't tell me she was coming over tonight. I did. You forgot. So, Mark tells me you're a solicitor. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, family law. Must be interesting. Not really. I'm at the um, scuddy end of the market. I don't think Kavanagh QC ever featured a custody battle for a Rottweiler, did it? And you're divorced? That's right, yes. So you'd have um, plenty in common. Usual reasons? Yeah, yeah. Boredom, loss of libido, the hard bits of tissue under his pillow, playing away. Women these days just want everything. Shut up, Mark. And both of you under the same roof, so you can um, you can go out in the pool together, can't you? Yeah, I mean, that'd be nice. I um I don't think I'm quite there yet. Yeah, oh, don't worry, I'll guide you through the pitfalls of the Lonely Hearts ads. If it says good sense of humour essential, it means the penis gets smaller when erect. You're dating again. Mm. You've fallen off your bike, and you need to get straight back on it. Why don't you go and do something useful with a corkscrew? Let me... So, how do you know Mark? Oh, um, he, he came on to me once when I was waiting at a bus stop. Oh, me too. He was driving the bus at the time. Yeah. That Reg Varney's got a lot to answer for, hasn't he? <laughs> More shelving. This isn't the last time I see these. Actually, what we need is more flat. <laughs> <laughs> One more flat, to be precise. For you. Well, wouldn't it be easier if I had a car boot sale? You need a new place. Of your own. You are joking. You aren't planning on camping out of the shop forever, are you? No. I thought I was moving in here. I've been sleeping here nearly every night. Right. Sleeping, not living. You knew I was moving in. That was always the plan. Well, that was always your plan. I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. Not this quickly. I don't want us to have a lodger. We need one if we're going to stay in the house. Dad will pay for us to stay in the house. We can't depend on that. We're going through a midlife crisis. His hair gel builds a rocket. Don't take the piss out of him. OK, sorry. Don't swear in front of John. I don't think he heard me. Just give Julie a chance. She seemed very nice. Two old women in the house. It doesn't bear thinking about. 
Harrison Ford evening, synchronised periods and double date. So you wouldn't mind if I started dating again then? Just a soundtrack to a life that is over all You don't have to do that right now. No, no, I don't want any misunderstandings. I'll go to the estate agent on the way to the shop. Right. Fine. Whatever you want. Where do they teach women to do that? Walk? Oh, we've been doing it for some time now. How can you just shut down an argument, go to work, uh, do something else, and just hold it all in? Look, I'm as nervous as you about all this, all right? It's all very sudden. I'm going to work. We've got to be honest, haven't we? Why? We can just be happy instead. <laughs> if I'd known this was your route, I'd get the boss to work. It isn't. But I was worried about you. I'm sorry about blurting all that stuff out about Paul. You already apologised. Forget it. It's not your fault. Well, at least you found out you're right about dumping him. I know. I didn't get the chance, did I? He'd already finished with me and I hadn't even noticed. It's all about control with you ladies, isn't it? Exactly, which is why I'm going to see a solicitor to get the divorce moving. Well, are, are you sure you're ready? Like you said, time's moving on. See ya. Well, I, I, I don't think I said that. Did I? Now her name's on. Costume came back covered in puke again. Well, that's the essential paradox at the heart of Carnival. You're all right. Fine. Here we go. Not bad. I shared a taxi with a bloke who used to be on West Ham's books. That's not to be sniffed at. You sure you're all right? No. No, I'm not. I never thought you'd do it. Not for good. Not for real. Too weak, huh? No, too kind. Yeah? All right. I never had you down for the sort of bastard who'd walk out on your kids. These things happen. I feel guilty now. Well, how do you figure that one? Well, I had no idea that you and me were... I mean, I just thought it was one of those things, you know? Something to do with being locked up in a shop together and it made me feel horny in a Sunday afternoon kind of way. Yeah, me too. So I am so sorry that it's ended up like this. I, it's not your fault. You don't have to be kind. In a funny way, you leaving a wife makes me feel less cheap. No, I mean it really, it's not your fault. Listen, it's just a thought, but if you're stuck for somewhere to stay, you know, till you get back on your feet, move in with me. Your place? Well, it's got to be better than living in the shop, and like I say, I do feel like some of it's my fault that she chucked you out on your ass. I left her, but thanks. That's an idea. Let me think about it, okay? Look, I know you think I'm a bit low rent for you, but you're just a mate who I slept with once by mistake. I mean, I feel sorry for you. I don't fancy you. It's not the same thing. What? I don't know what your problem is here. I just want a divorce. OK. Let's say we go the adultery route. Then he agrees with you. Then, well, there's no guarantee that you will, believe me. Then the decree nine size is issued, and then we get to arrangements for the children. And that's when the fun really starts. And 
My meter starts ticking. Uh, maintenance. Access. Family assets. We've been living apart for five months, and the other day we agreed it was better to split up. There's not much for separation, is it? I mean, I've waited for trains longer than that. I want my life back. I want to draw a line under my marriage. I'll put your name down for conciliation. You've already been going to marriage guidance. So you do want to save your marriage? No. We just want to sit up without killing each other. Spare the kids, see us slogging it out. Maybe even stop ourselves making the same mistakes again. <laughs> that last bit's just something you say, right? <laughs> How old are you? I'm 25. But I've lived a lot. <laughs> right. Look, if you really want to regain control of your life, then why don't you go and confront these two women of his? What would be the point of that? It would stop you obsessing about them. How do you know I'm obsessing about them? Oh, you, you're telling me you're not? Oh, well, in that case, you really don't need a divorce. Simon Armitage. Great poems. Yeah. Are you looking for anything in particular? No, I think I'll know it when I find it. Kids party or grown-ups? Kids. How old? Young. Very young. Well, I might be able to help. I'm a children's entertainer. Oh, right. It's a full act with balloon animals. I bet it is. What? What? What is it? Have I got something in my face? No. I, I was just thinking you seem very young to be a part-time clown. H how old did you say your child was? Oh, these are for me. Um, something my 21-year-old boyfriend likes me to wear. trying to prove that I didn't care I'm sure going down to the shop and having a nervous breakdown in front of her really hammered that home my solicitor told me I had to confront my demons why the whole point about demons is that you're supposed to run away from them that's why they go by the scary name of demons it's a major clue I thought at least she might be fat or a B.O. or something why would that have made it any easier well that would have made Paul a sad bastard Look, you don't need Mary's help to prove that. Thanks. It, well, you never know. Perhaps Veronica's got personal hygiene issues. Mm, well, I won't be getting close enough to her to find out. Oh, come on. You've done the hard bit. You've already confronted the younger woman. At least you know that Veronica isn't going to be younger and prettier than you. I never said Mary was prettier than me. Didn't you? You think she is, don't you? Are you going to see Veronica or not? I might wait for a while till I get my confidence back. What, so, ten years or so? Longer if I listen to any more of your pet talks. Hiya. Oh, hi, hi. I had no idea you'd be moving in this soon. Oh, yes, yeah, OK. And I just thought, you know, no point hanging around. Um, don't, don't worry, I'm going to be chucking a lot of this stuff, so... It doesn't matter. It, it, it's fine, really. I'll make a cup of tea. And I'll roll us a big fat joint. What? 
I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's just a bit like being students again, isn't it? No, don't worry. I don't want it to be like that. I won't start, you know, um, and putting up cure posters and, and nicking food from your fridge and saying it was there for anyone who wanted it. I'm scaring you now, aren't I? Yeah. I'll just um, unpack a few more things. I want a lock on my door. You owe me that much. into her eyes and feel pure hatred. She didn't feel anything. Just embarrassment. Don't play down the embarrassment. It's one of the worst things about getting divorced. Really? Oh, oh, long after you've stopped worrying that you're going to see him in the street with his new girlfriend. Thanks. <coughs> while, while you're on the way to the little drip wearing flip-flops with your hair all scraped back, because that make you think no-one will notice it's greasy. This has happened to you, hasn't it? <laughs> Is it that obvious? Yeah, I mean, long after all that, you know, the pain and the grief and the howling is over, you were still left with the embarrassment. It took me ages to tell my mum and dad. How long? I don't know, because I haven't actually told them yet. But you've been separated nearly two years. Haven't they noticed anything strange? Oh, I don't see them that much. I want to do it. I just make up an excuse. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Are you two here to enjoy yourselves? To prove you can still pull? What's he talking about? I don't know. You're Julie Chaperon. Hang on a minute, I thought you She's were... got a blind date, and you just have to keep your eye out in case he's a psycho or a creep or your husband. I thought you were going to do that. Oh, well, something's dropped up. You've got a date, haven't you? Women just love a man in uniform. It's like that bloke in Captain Corelli's mandolin. Captain Corelli. Yeah, that's him. Except with buses. I'll see you later. So I'm really sorry about this. I mean, we just drink up and go if you'd rather. But I'd like to help you, Julie, but I don't think you're very good at it. Shit. 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 I think it's too late. I think that's him. Oh, just my look. First one this month who looks like he's got his own teeth. <laughs> he does look quite nice. Oh, my head. Scratch my nose, come over and rescue me. Okay. Well, I could pretend to be your jealous lesbian lover. Not if we want to get rid of him. Trust me. You're not really going to move in here, are you? Do I have to start again? I see that now. It's all I can afford. I think, uh, like a paint new furniture, I can make it work. If I'm gonna make a fresh start, I really think it should be a fresh start, you know? Good for you. Thanks. Hmm. <laughs> I really respect you for moving in here, you know? Respect me? Oh, you're so full of shit. You just told me this is what you wanted. You know what I wanted. I wanted us to be together. I wanted us to live together like a couple who are mad about each other and want to spend every hour they can together. What's this about, then? Some sort of test? Yeah. OK, it was a test. You see, on my side, I lied. I left my wife. I left my kids. I'm moving into ship mansions. I'm sharing a front door with four Albanian bricklayers. And what is it you've given up, exactly, for this relationship so far? I never asked you to leave your wife. Oh, no. No, you just asked me to stay the night. You told me about other blokes that you might see. You asked me to go on holiday with you, knowing what the answer had to be. So, no, no, you didn't ask me to leave my wife. You just made it impossible not to. So this isn't a home to you, then. It's just a stick to beat me with. This relationship isn't what it said on the box. Oh. How long did it take you to think that one up? <laughs> is, uh, is anybody sitting here? Uh, no, not really. Are you waiting for someone? No. 
Do you think you could lean forward, please? Thanks. Are you making fun of me? No, I'm not. I'm claustrophobic. I have to see a clear route to an exit at all times. Oh, right. You are making fun of me. I'm not, really. Um, Doug, by the way. Sarah. Uh, can I get you a drink, Sarah? No, thanks. Um, I don't mean to be rude. Me and my husband, we just split up. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Look, let me get you that drink, please. Do you think that when a man's seen a woman give birth, that something changes in that man? Can't say I'd ever really thought about it. Maybe that's where it all goes wrong. Because to be honest, Doug, you could be the most attractive man in this bar. <laughs> Don't know about that. But I'd never want you to see me naked. You know why? Um, no, I don't. Because the way my husband looked at me after I've had my kids made me just believe that I was, you know... Maybe if you were very drunk and it was very dark, maybe you could... Uh, Overcome your disgust. Um, sorry, I, I don't think this is going to work. I just want to say that I think maybe this new thing that we're doing, well, perhaps we got off to a bad start. After you today. After you walked out on me. Never done that for a woman before. Then why didn't you catch me? I was wearing Doc Martens. If I had a pound for every time I heard that line. <laughs> I suddenly realised this was it. I was being chatted up. And I had no small talk. I just had nothing to say to him. You're just rusty. 20 years more than rust. I think that makes me pretty much seized up. No, just give it a few weeks. All right. No, I can't do it. It's just been too long. I've got the dating skills of a 16-year-old trapped inside a 40-year-old body. What does that make me? A man. Shut up. Hmm. So, um, just wondering, did you get onto the placenta at all? No. I thought I'd keep it light for it being the first day. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going back to the flat. Oh, come on. You don't have to do that. I want to. Why? Because I want to get it right, you and me. And what you said about respecting each other's space makes sense. If I don't do this tonight, it'll just become a bigger and bigger deal, OK? OK. Right.
We don't buy. Mounts. What are you doing? I'm on a protein only diet. Well, I work for Elvis Presley. I just want to look my best when I see Veronica. Yeah, and I've heard that a little dab of bacon grease is a new Botox. When I walk through that door, I wanted to think, wow, she's beautiful. I'll never live up to her. Well, and then what? She just lets you take Paul home. No, I don't want her to give Paul up. I just think she deserves something to worry about. Well, if you want to be really mature, why don't you just do a wheelie on your bike outside our house? A single divorced parent. You're trying to make mum feel guilty or something? It's, it's all I can afford. You've seen Mrs. Doubtfire often enough. This is the way the dad always starts out. She wouldn't want you living here, even if she does hate you. This is the way my life is going to be for a while. I've got to accept that. I'm a grown up. Why don't you move in with a girlfriend? <laughs> girlfriend. I haven't got a girlfriend. Really? Really. It's your mum lusting after blokes from work. Yeah, she's allowed to now. now. Who knows when it started? What are you saying? You split up because mum's having an affair. I never said that. Did I say that? She is, isn't she? Life isn't as simple as you seem to think it is. There's some things I can't tell you. Be fair. I don't want you spending money on me and John if it means you have to live in that flat. It's not like that. I work on Mum. Don't say I said anything, OK? Why are you protecting her? I'm not. I'm protecting all of us. I don't want you getting caught in the middle, all right? Bye, Dad. See you, love. <laughs> But I lost it, and now will you take me back anyway now? If, if you insist that this is for door, the best will then help sail the ship on. Hello, sailor. What do you want? Is Veronica in? No. Who is it? Look, I know this might sound like shit, but I really didn't need Paul to leave you. That's right. It does sound like shit. You should go now. Why are you torturing yourself like this, sir? I don't feel tortured. So it looks like he's chosen you, then. Well, yes, I suppose that is one way of looking at it. You don't work in the shop, too, do you? No. <laughs> this is so childish. <laughs> this... It wasn't part of a plan. 
we were having an affair and I really didn't know it was going to end up like this. What are you saying? We could have just carried on as we were, you would have been happy. I didn't have to deal with all the shit that comes with actually being a proper couple. Oh, I'm going to go and get some cigarettes. You don't smoke. <laughs> Do now. You were shagging my husband, and now you tell me you didn't want all of him anyway. And that's supposed to make me feel better. That makes it worse, don't you see that? Yeah, yeah, I, I can see how it might look. You can't do this, you know. Oh, I don't make a habit of it. Cigarette out of your mouth. You look like an arsehole. Yeah, but a smoking arsehole. What have you told her? What? What have you told her? I told her you shave your bits for Lent. What do you mean, what have I told her? I thought you were going to mention that stuff about the shop, Mary. I never knew you knew. Oh, so that's why you broke a car. Worked, didn't it? Distracted you? Yes, and it was so dignified. Well, thanks for uh, not mentioning it. Mary was a bit of a surprise, I must admit. Didn't strike me as your type. He spoke to her. Don't worry, don't have to break any clockery. I didn't tell her who I was. It's just something that happened. Once. I'm not proud of myself. She's a bit young, though, isn't she? I mean, how old is she exactly? Nearly 30. No, I meant a developmental age. Don't be cheap, don't suit you. And don't talk like you care doesn't suit you. Pizza, burger. Okay, choose the disease you want later in life and we'll work backwards to menu. Don't fancy it. What's wrong with him? Tony, are you serious? Rachel, what is going on? I saw Dad today. Oh, yeah? You should see where he's living. I see what this is about. You think if we don't have a pizza, your dad's going to afford a better place? Well, he could. Maybe. Look, your dad and I will sort something out about money. I know things are a little bit strange at the moment. But it'll get better. I promise. I know, Mum. What? You know what? I know you had an affair. What? That's the real reason you and him split up, isn't it? I never had an affair. Rachel, I never had an affair. I wouldn't. I bet I know who put this idea into your head. Yeah, well, he told me not to say anything. Yeah, I bet he did. Oh. Rachel! Yeah, we don't know he lied. I mean, Rachel might have made it up. She might be testing you out. No. Anyway, he's done me a favour. I'm more than over him. I'm moving on. Mark, find me a bloke. Well, there is a possible over there who can't keep his eyes off you. Sarah, hang on a minute. Which one? Two o'clock, pint of lager, reading the book. And the book's not a great sign. But it'll give you something to talk about if the conversation flies. Ah, so that's why you always carry a book around with you. You can mock, but I didn't hear Sonia complaining last night when I read her extracts from Hannibal. <laughs> Was that before or after the sex? Uh, during. <laughs> that good, eh? Well, it's not all her fault. It can be very daunting sleeping with a sex legend. And they say there are no decent men around. Quick, look, 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 you're over again. Well, he might be looking at Julie. Well, I'll find out my way out. 
Where are you going? I'm seeing Sonia again. What after what you said about her? Every girl deserves a second chance. And I'll have a word with Loverboy, don't worry. I'll find out which one of you two he's got marked down as a gore. Uh, I think I might be a bit hasty. Well, you don't have to do anything. But surely knowing you could have is nearly as good. Knowing you could have is usually better. I know this might be a bit like kids at school, but that's usually how I get things done. And I've noticed that you've been uh, looking over at the two women that are with me. And just to tell you, they're not actually with me. They're just with me. And, uh, and they're both single at the moment. And they're, they're both lovely women. And you're gay, aren't you? Uh, and it was me you were looking at. Right. Um, OK. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Hey. Yeah. I think things have moved on a lot this week. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think personally. I've made a lot of progress. Sarah, you seem to have some doubts about what Paul's just said. No, I think things have moved on yeah, too. I know what she's going to say. Could you not interrupt, Paul? But I know. Yeah, I just need to hear Sarah say it. I don't know if you're going to gang up on me. Paul has been lying to me, and now he started lying to my daughter. Maybe that's what he means when he said he's made progress. And when did I lie? What did I lie about? You've been seeing two other women, and you told our daughter that I was the one who was having the affair. Is that true, Paul? Have you been having an affair? Yeah, I suppose so. And did you lie to your daughter? Not exactly, no. How do you mean, not exactly? He means yes. I mean yes. Have you an idea why? Because children are very scary. Especially your own. So you're afraid of your own children? We all are. It's the great secret of parenthood. Read all you can about child psychology. Apply consistent boundaries, but most of all, give in. So you lied, despite the fact that what you did would alienate Sarah and damage your relationship with your children? Well, you make it sound like I did something terrible. Nobody died, did they? Is that your measure of a successful emotional strategy? No deaths? And like I said, it's been a good week. Party tonight. Wear something vaguely feminine to try and offset your tash. I meant what I said, by the way, about you being the most attractive woman in the room. That's always nice to hear. Thank you. Hey, what are you doing here? Thought I'd move in. Great. Excellent stuff. Well, Inspector Frost has been away for a while now, but returns tomorrow and finds himself thrown in at the deep end. A double murder in brand new. A touch of Frost tomorrow evening at 9. Next, though, stay with us for the Premiership.